Let's talk about these numbers. As long as you don't eat or go anywhere, maybe you're doing okay. <laughs> but what's your reaction? Any surprise? Don't drive anywhere either. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Um, so it's kind of like a tale of two different numbers. So year over year, it's still up 7.6%, which is pretty uh, substantial to think that we are paying 7.6% on average for the same basket of goods that we would have bought last year. Uh, so like you mentioned there in the intro, grocery costs are up uh, year over year. We're paying more for baked goods. We're paying more for gasoline. Uh, we're paying more for a lot of different services that we need in our everyday life. But then you look at month over month, gasoline prices actually fell in the month month of July compared to June. So Canadians who have been getting used to these higher gasoline prices are now starting to feel a bit of reprieve, at least in the short term. So month over month, yes, uh, inflation is down. But I still think that the, the fact that we are at a decades high, multi-decade high, uh, is still the headline. Uh, the fact that inflation, yes, interest rates are rising, but inflation is still ticking uh, close to, you know, close to a 30, 35 year high. And for grocery costs, for example, we haven't paid this much since the early 1980s, price increases, that is, since the early 1980s, year over year. Now, and let's try to get some perspective on this, because yes, they are going up, and as you say, particularly the staples, for a variety of reasons as well. But these are being compared in many respects to uh, a worldwide pandemic, when so much of the world came to a, a stop and there wasn't the same demand for those products. So are we getting an actual sense of, of how prices are, are going or the increase is slowing right now? So one of the big in biggest increases, increases we saw year over year is travel, hotels, and air transportation. And if you look back to last year, not many people were traveling or getting on a plane for a number of different reasons. Uh, restrictions still uh, were around where you had to prove you were vaccinated. You had to go through a lot of hoops to get to wherever you needed to go. Then there was concern that you may have to isolate in the place that you are if you test positive. So a lot of people just weren't traveling for those reasons. And that's why, you know, hotel prices were lower last year, air, trans air transportation was lower last year. So yes, compared to last year, which was a bit of an anomaly, uh, prices are more exaggerated uh, because they were depressed last year at this time. Really what will be interesting to see is now that we're getting back to our new normal, restrictions have been lifted, we're starting to see things get back to what we used to see uh, pre-March 2020, what the year-over-year -year increases are going to be because air, uh, accommodation, for example, is up double digits. That can't continue because nobody will be able to afford to stay in a hotel if that's the case. Food, we know, is up, though. There's no question about that. And that's the, that's the, 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 the family food basket, the mouths to feed. you got to feed them. I Grocery shopping on Sunday, over 200 bucks, and I realized I hadn't actually bought any meat. It was just yes. <laughs> vegetables and, and, you know, a few staples like that. Um, so let's talk about how families are getting hit. Yeah, so families, you know, you can tell families over and over again, don't travel, don't go to a restaurant, don't spend on extras, but you can't tell a family, don't go to the grocery store. You have to go to a grocery store, even if you go to a discount store or maybe one of those no frills type of stores where they don't have, you know, the extras, that really does uh, save you some money. But even there, you're seeing prices rise, uh, you know, year over year, baked goods up 13%, meat up in some cases, depending on the cut you buy, more than 20%. And so families are making these real time decisions when they get to the grocery store. Do I buy lemons this time or do I wait until next time? Which is something that many families didn't have to do. I mean, for myself included, there are basics that I just put in my basket every single time I go to the grocery store. I don't even look at the price because it hardly ever changed. But now I'm looking at that price and now I'm trying to decide uh, whether it's worth it for me to actually spend the money on that thing that I used to buy every week without even thinking about it. And for families who have been hit by the pandemic where they've seen their jobs stop, uh, they've been on emergency benefits, they've gone into debt. For them, their situation is even more uh, uh, serious as they are dealing with debt that they're carrying because of the pandemic and now dealing with higher costs at places they can't avoid, like the grocery store. Gas is complicated, and it's also dramatic. Uh, you, you pretty much remember time to time what it takes you to fill up. It's up there on the marquee as you pull in to, to gas up. And, of course, gas prices can affect the price of food in terms of everything gets delivered to our doors. So what are we expecting there? 
So gas prices month over month are down, but year over year are still up 35%. So we're still paying quite a bit more for gasoline than we were um, last year at this time. And that affects the price of everything. So most things in this country are trucked to their destination. So grocery store items, for example, are trucked to their destination. And so that's an increased cost for the company that's trucking them to the grocery stores. And they sell that good for more to the grocery stores. And then they pass that on to the consumer. So they sell it for more when you go into the store. They're not able to offer the same discounts. And so gasoline prices affect everything, even if you don't drive, which is one of the things I often tell people, try to drive less to save on gasoline prices. You still are affected by it because all the things that you are buying are driven or trucked in. And so their prices are increased for those reasons. Okay, Rabina, crystal ball time. What are you watching <laughs> for in the next few months? So I think inflation is going to cool considering, you know, in higher interest rates are definitely putting a damper on uh, home prices. Home sales are down as well. Uh, so people are not willing to buy as a bid, sorry, as much for a home as they were, say, in February or March 2020 when interest rates were really at rock bottom. We never, hadn't seen them that low in, in decades. And so people are being more cautious. Uh, they're not uh, they're not doing things as uh, aggressively. Like if they're going to do a renovation, they may think a little bit more before where it was really cheap to borrow out of your line of credit and doing renovation, they may not be as incentivized to do it. So I think going forward, we are going to see prices cool. But the Bank of Canada governor himself has said that it's going to take about 18 months for these higher interest rates to really show up in our day-to-day -day, uh, lives. So at the grocery store, at the gas pumps, in our household goods. Uh, so it's a slow move towards when we can see normal inflation. And one thing to point out, John, is not like prices are going to go back to March 2020 levels. They're just not going to increase at 7 8% year over year. We'll go back to that 2 to 3% increase that is a little bit more manageable for most Canadians.